Workshop Statistics, Topic 7, Displaying and Describing Distributions. In Topic 2, we use the acronym SOX, Shape, Outliers, Center, Spread, in the context of a data situation to create a checklist of features to describe the distribution of a quantitative variable. We also looked at some common shapes of distributions of a single quantitative variable, such as skew to the left, bell-shaped, skew to the right, uniform, and bimodal. You should also recall that in a skewed distribution, the skew follows the tail. So a distribution that is skewed to the left, or lower values, has a tail on the left-hand side of the graph. The graph that we used to display a single quantitative variable was a dot plot. We also use dot plots on the same scale to compare a quantitative variable broken down by one or more categorical variables. Recall that we graph the quantitative variable seatbelt compliance percentage for states broken down by the categorical variable law type. In this section we will learn to construct two additional types of graphs for graphing quantitative data of a single variable. They are stem plots, also referred to as stem and leaf plots, and histograms. I will illustrate constructing a stem and leaf plot with an example. Fifteen students with part-time jobs were randomly selected and the number of hours worked last week was recorded. First, we want to order the data. Next, decide on a stem value. Since the values are one or two digit whole numbers, I'll use the tens digit for the stem and the ones digit for the leaves. Next, draw a vertical line and place your stems in order. I need zero for the ones digit since their tens digit is zero. Next, add the leaves in ascending order, working from left to right. Each leaf should be spaced the same. You can think of a stem plot as a dot plot turns on, turned on its side with the leaves as the dots and the height of the leaves representing the frequency. Last, but certainly not least, Add a descriptive title and a key for the stem and leaf plot. Without a key, I don't know if 0 slash 2 represents 2 tenths of an hour worked or 2 hours worked. In this example, since we only had 3 stems, it is often helpful to expand the number of stems as shown. Where the leaves 0 to 4 go with the first occurrence of the stem and 5 to 9 go with the second occurrence of the stem. This graph makes it a bit easier to see patterns in the data. We describe the graph of a single quantitative variable by talking about the key features, the socks, shape, outliers, other unusual features if present, center, and spread. For the 15 randomly selected students, the typical number of hours worked last week was 10 hours. The shape of the distribution of hours worked is skewed slightly to the right due to the student who worked 25 hours last week, a value that may be a possible outlier. There's a good deal of variability in the number of hours worked by these students last week, with a low of 2 hours and a high of 25 hours worked. For large data sets, dot plots and stem plots are not very practical to construct by hand. A histogram is often used for medium to large size data sets. A histogram divides the data into non-overlapping bins or subintervals of equal width, whose heights correspond to the frequency in each subinterval. This histogram displays the heart rates of 1,964 healthy adult men ages 25 to 40 in beats per second. The width of each interval is 10 seconds. The convention is that the left-hand value of a subinterval is included in the interval and the right-hand value is not. The highlighted bar would include heart rates greater than or equal to 75 beats per second and less than 85 beats per second. A histogram displays the distribution of a single quantitative variable. When constructing a histogram, draw a number line for the x-axis and label the axis with the quantitative variable of interest, in this case heart rate. Label the vertical axis with the frequency, either in counts, proportions, or percents. We would describe the distribution of a histogram using the same key features we use to describe a dot plot or a stem plot. For this example, we'll use data from a class of 5th grade students who was asked to choose their number one goal from the choices being good at sports, being popular, or getting good grades. A graph of the distribution is displayed. Would you describe the shape of this distribution as skewed to the left? If you did, you fell into a common trap. 
In this scenario, we are dealing with a single categorical variable, the student's number one goal. A bar chart is a graphical display for a single categorical variable. The spaces between the bars separate the various categories, and the ordering of the categories is arbitrary. Remember, a histogram describes the distribution of a single quantitative variable. The order is important because the horizontal axis is a number line. Any gaps in a histogram represent subintervals with a frequency of zero. When describing a histogram, the key features of center, shape, spread, and any unusual features like outliers or gaps are discussed in the context of the data. A bar chart describes the distribution of a single categorical variable. The spaces are used to separate the categories, and the ordering of the categories is arbitrary. In describing a bar chart, discuss the similarities and differences using proportions or percents. For example, more than half of the stu students surveyed chose getting good grades as their number one goal, while fewer than 20% chose sports, and about 30% chose being popular as their number one goal. I can't stress it enough, when first encountering a data set, always ask yourself whether your data is categorical or quantitative. The answer to this question will help to determine an appropriate graph to display the distribution and an appropriate way to describe and analyze it.